Hey! Hey, stop! Get back here! Are you okay? I thought I could change her. Things could be different. Forget about it. Come on. We gotta find a way to stop her before... No, don't come any closer. Doc. Go away! But... Move! Move! Marty! Oh my god! Doc! Say something. Chromium, uh, lithium, potassium, iridium, titanium, ruthenium. I'll, I'll get help. Newspaper. What? You mean... I'm gonna get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. Yes. Oh, I think I am going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. Doc, come back. Marty, have you been out here the whole time? Damn it. Um, is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. And if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh, what was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by an electromagnet of that size is going to play havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. I wonder if we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force, one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight through... Great Scott, that's it! So, what comes next? Work, work, and more work. A few more stumbles, followed by a breakthrough or two. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry, is something wrong? It's a long story. Let's just say I, uh, I lost somebody. Oh, how sad. Anyone I know? No, uh, nobody here knew him. He was a complete stranger to this world. I know the feeling. Sounds like a man after my own heart. <laughs> then it is someone I know. Yeah, no, uh, forget it. It's got nothing to do with you. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. Where you come from, what you're doing here... But there's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Uh, please, Emmett, don't ask What's any... What's this? Come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. Okay, here goes. What's that? An explanation. But you've got to promise me, don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Emmett! Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. 
not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to something. Just, just say you promise. Okay, I promise. Wait, I will see you again, right? I guarantee it. Same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. Only way I could do it without messing up your timeline. Very clever. But what are you doing in 1931? came to rescue you. Teenage me? No, you, you. But then teenage you got mixed up in it. See, you were in jail and... Never mind, it's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. Me? Nah, no. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy of the McFly name. You see my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can you believe it? Hitched? Married. I swear, that boy's gonna put his pop out in an early grave. So that's how she got her job back. Ah, he, he's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was Great Grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on me. Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of- That car! Oh, great. How the hell did she get back here? She? You? You're not Edna. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me, did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Well... Wait, Edna Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? If that's what you call it. It made a loud noise, and then wham! Nothing! Great Scott! Marty, do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys. You mind telling me what the hell you're... Uh-oh. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. H how 
Something must have happened to it. A long time ago. Well, now, you two look at my lost. Hey, what on earth is that thing? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. We're looking for Hill Valley. Well, which is it, a hill or a valley? No, it's a town. It's a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley a town? Say, I, I think I once heard that there was a town here a long time ago. Don't know much about it, though. Just as I suspected. What happened in Hill Valley? Oh, heck, I don't know. That was all before I was born. Then whatever it was must have happened at least 45 years ago. Nobody much cares to settle around here nowadays. My dad tried to buy a farm in this area years ago, but he got run off by Scary Mary. Scary Mary? Well, that's what we all call her. Lives a couple miles from here. I make a monthly drop at her place. She's a fiend for news. Takes all the papers in the county, never throws one away. Say, if there's anybody who could tell you what happened to Hill Valley, it's her. Can you direct us to her? It's imperative that we talk to her. Sorry, fellas, but I'm pretty sure she won't talk to you. Why wouldn't she talk to us? The thing of it is, guys, Mary's older than dirt. But she's also a little touched, if you catch my drift. She doesn't like strangers. I'm sure we can handle her. We'll be very polite. Please, we gotta see her. Well, okay, if you insist. Take a right turn just after the bridge, then follow the wheel ruts till they come to an end. You'll have to go the last quarter mile on foot. Good luck, and don't say I didn't warn you. I got a notion I'll be kicking myself for sending you up there. Can I drive? Mary Pickford. It's a... Step away from the cabin! <gasps> Pardon us for intruding, madam. We were wondering if you could tell us... I don't talk to hooligans! Not a very friendly sort. Doc, that was Edna. Edna Strickland? Impossible. This is how she was when I first met her. I had to... Listen, just leave it to me. Okay, you think you know how to handle her. Just remember, we need to know what happened to Hill Valley, and just as importantly, the precise time when it happened. Hey, Miss Strick. Who are you? Marty McFly. That's a foolish name. And I make it a rule not to talk to strangers with foolish names. But we're not strangers. How do I know you? You interviewed me once, back when you were young. Listen, Sonny, I'm an easygoing woman, but I got a few rules I live by. And rule number one is, I never... Ever talk about the past or the future neither I don't talk about any day but today I guess that didn't go so well of course she doesn't talk about the past because there's something in her past she's trying to forget but we're gonna pry it out of her go ahead knock on the door again look 
It's me again, your old friend. How do I know you? We spent the day together. We did? Where? At the expo. That's crazy. I've been here all... What day is it? Tuesday, October 13th, 1931. October 13th, 1931. October 13th. Something funny about that date. Well, what are you here for? I brought something for you. What is it? Let me see. I brought you these algae cakes. Wait there. You've got a nice cactus here. Quit beating around the bush! Were you expecting anything, uh, in particular? I wasn't expecting you. I brought you... him! Him! Ho oh, him! Him ho! Look hard! Don't tell me you don't recognize your own boyfriend. My boyfriend? Yeah, he's, um, he's all grown up. Come closer, fella. Marty, what am I supposed to do? Trust me, Doc. Just go with it. It can't be! Emmett! Yes, Edna. It's me. October 13th, 1931. Oh, and you are Emmett. <gasps> Emmett. Oh. How did I get so turned around? H have I been dreaming? Or oh, stay there. It's a classic case of repressed memory syndrome. Once the mental dam is broken, the subject is immediately plunged into the midst of the very scenes she's trying to forget. You've come back! Of course I knew you would. An intelligent boy like you wouldn't be one to throw away true love all because of a silly quarrel. I've already forgotten about last night's little tiff. I trust you've done the same? Of course I have. Of course I have. What? Oh. Uh. Schnookums. Uh, uh, schnookums. <laughs> you're sweet. But you're still keeping company with this Smirnoff character. I insist you drop him. He's a bad influence. And you've got to stop working on that dangerous electrokinetic... What's this? Um, okay. I suppose now you're miffed with me for forcing Detective Parker to close your booth down. Bitter medicine for you, I know, but I had to do it. And Parker had no choice but to obey my orders. He knows that my opinion carries a lot of weight in Hill Valley, and he'd never... Parker would never... Oh... What is it? I don't know. Something about Detective Parker. Something that happened to me on October 13th. What could it be? Can you jog her memory? 
If we can keep her mind in the past, we may get the full story of Hill Valley's premature destruction. Help me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. I won't have you spreading stories about me. speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. No! Turn it off, you imbecile! If Parker hears that, he'll... Officer, I can explain. It was a trick. I was framed. Oh! He's after me! Ha! He'll never catch me in this souped-up car of the future! Curses! I can't shake him! Well, no use in holding back now! Let's see what this baby can do! And... Here it comes! Yes? Here what comes? I, uh... I, I don't know. Something really unexpected is supposed to happen right about now, but I'm not sure what. Oh, come to think of it, how can I be expecting something unexpected at... Oh... What's going on? Quick, Marty. We've got to find a way to push the story along before she snaps out of her reverie. I don't think so. Can't you move a little faster, Danny? He'll never catch me in this car. It's about to do something unbelievable. Here they come! The lights! I'm being transported! Where? Back! Back! To the past! What do you see? Hill Valley! But it's all different! It's so small and primitive! Heavens! Can it be? It is! Is what? Grandfather! Big as life! Marshal James Strickland came to Hill Valley in 1869, shot by... Ma I know, Doc. We met him in 1885. Remember? No! I must be mistaken. Grandfather didn't look like that. That man is an imposter! I'm not even sure it is a man! This is all very confusing. Where am I? Why am I thinking about the past? Get off my lawn, you kids! Better find a way to bring back Marshal Strickland, quick! We've got to bring this story to a climax! Looks like a Strickland to me. Like my little brother, perhaps, but not like my grandfather. Grandfather was much more... Uh, shaggy. I'm guessing this mop doesn't get much use. It looks a bit like Grandfather now, but he would never have walked around bareheaded. This hat doesn't frame her face very well. Not bad. Oh, Grandfather, how well you look. How well everything looks. How does everything look? Tell me. It's a bit rustic, to be sure. But all the buildings are so sturdy and well-kept. And the young people of Hill Valley, they're so virtuous and upright. So unlike the degenerate specimens from the 20th century. And I know the reason why. Why? why? 
They haven't yet fallen prey to the vices of booze and debauchery. They are still in a state of innocence. I think I could learn to like living here. <gasps> but who's this? Who? This big lout swaggering up the street. Lips curled in an insolent sneer. He's a newcomer to Hill Valley. Uh, Beauregard. Beauregard... Tannen. Yes! Good guess. Look at him. Acting like a big shot. Throwing his money around. Stolen money, no doubt. Why can't they see through him? The two-bit phony! And now his plan becomes clear. He's bought a plot of land in town. He's going to put up a... Uh, a... Uh, a what? I don't know. It's something I don't like. Something... evil. This is the key to our mystery. We've got to get her memory back in the groove. She's got a point, Marshal. You could have run Tannen out of town and saved us all a lot of trouble. An old saloon sign. Cool. Too bad it's all burnt. Talk about a watering hole. A saloon? In Hill Valley? Oh, he can't do that! Grandpa, you can't let him do it! You can't let that snake ruin paradise! Well, if they're all too blind to stop him, I'll just have to take the law into my own hands. I'll make sure this sinful establishment never opens its doors. I'll... I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. Something very... Conclusive! Hey, she's your granddaughter. You do something. I wonder what's cooking. It all wrong. It'll never burn like that. First, we'll need some kerosene. Apply it liberally to the building site. No sense in being parsimonious. And now, watch. Isn't it beautiful? The devil's handiwork consumed by the fires of righteousness. <laughs> burn, you sucker! Burn! She was never this passionate when we were dating. Uh oh. What is it, Edna? Is it the fire? Turn away! Don't look! It's not staying in the saloon, is it? It's spreading to the other buildings in Hill Valley. My intentions were pure. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. But it did happen like this. And you've been repressing it all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're... A hooligan. I'm a hooligan. <laughs> but I lay it on too thick. Here's the story. Black and white and red all over. Huh. Hill Valley destroyed by fire. Started approximately 2 a.m. July 17th, 1876. Of course, I'm not the real criminal in this story, am I, Mr. Sagan? You set me up for a fall, you and Schmernoff. You made me steal your infernal car. You made me burn down Hill Valley. And now, by the powers invested in me by the town of Hill Valley, I hereby sentence you two criminals to... Hey. You! How much have you heard? Enough for a month's worth of headlines in a Hayesville Herald. 
Two months worth if you shoot those fellas. I could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law, right? This is your cue to skedaddle. Right. Much obliged. There's Beauregard Tannen's half-finished saloon. Sometime during the next hour, Edna's going to light it on fire and accidentally burn down Hill Valley. I wonder where her DeLorean is. We'll find it later. Right now, we've got to stop that fire. I'll go around back. You go through the front. Got it. I'd better not get too close. Who's there? Edna, stop. It's just me. Mr. Sagan? What are you doing here? I was gonna ask you the same question, Miss Pickford. Isn't it obvious? I'm putting an end to your den of iniquity before it starts. I don't think so, Mary. I don't like shooting women, but no one comes between Beauregard B. Tannen and his livelihood. Tannen, stop! If you shoot her, she'll drop the torch, and this whole place will burn up! And the stop! If you drop that torch, he'll shoot us! Looks like we're at something of a standoff here, Mr. Tannen. I don't see a way out, unless somebody manages to disarm both of you at the same time. How the hell am I supposed to do that? I wonder what's in these. No, stop, quiet! Gah. What the hell? Oh, cow crap! There goes all my pickled pig's feet! Pickle juice? That ought to be handy for putting out torches. It's too heavy to lift. A hundred years from now, Hill Valley will erect... down looks like your torch is getting a little dim there miss pickford it's still hot enough to bring down this little bit of gomorrah tannin uh. all right physics are you here to haul me back to 1931 for my <laughs> What was that noise? What noise? I didn't hear a noise. Okay, that was lucky. Won't be long now. We'll just see. Mary Pickford? Don't tell me that you're not traveling through... Come on. 
Got any last words? I'll see you in hell, Tannen. You first, lady. Come on, you son of a... Who the hell are you? I'm the Diversion, butthead. Nice one, Doc! Don't tell Clara. She thinks Fisticuffs set a bad example for the boys. Now, where's Edna? Doc, she's gone. Edna's DeLorean. We gotta stop her before she hits 18 miles per hour. Come on! Nothing to be worried about. You're a smart woman with a strong moral compass. You just need to think your way out of it. Oh, fudge! What's she doing? I think she's spouting euphemisms at us. Luckily, the road out of Hill Valley is still pretty rough in 1875. It's unlikely she will manage to accelerate 88 miles an hour anytime soon. How are we gonna stop her? Good question. We can't risk injuring her or damaging the vehicle for fear of altering the timeline even further. Luckily, those diagnostic lights my alternate itself put all over her and Roy and have given me an idea. Here, take these. What are these? Flux synchronization modules. How do they work? I generally use them for maintenance purposes, but we might be able to use them to sync up with the alternate Roy's diagnostic modules, thus making it possible to link both sets of time circuits and override the time destination of the alternate DeLorean. At least that's the theory, anyway. That's a great plan, I think. Best of all, we won't need to weld the modules to the frame. We can just snap them over the diagnostic lights. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to go out there? How the heck am I supposed to do that? Good question. Let me think. Aha! A hoverboard! Saved our hides a few times before, so it seemed like the appropriate tool to bring along for the job. Sweet! You okay? It's just like riding a bike. You ready to make the jump? Ready, Doc. One! Whoa! Nice form, buddy. How's the reception on the wireless? Great. Where'd you get these? From Burns Cash, a 21st century video game consoles. Now remember, all you've got to do is attach the flux modules to those diagnostic lights. Will do, Doc. But it's getting a little bumpy out here. I already put a flux override here.
Nice work, Martin. Maybe not. up till now? Well, here goes nothing, Doc. Whoa! Perfect! Now, aim the focusing towards the receiving dish on my DeLorean. Uh, receiving dish, receiving dish. Uh, check! Him with the flux synchronizers, and that's strange. What? According to these readings, the temporal cohesion of Edna's DeLorean is decaying at an alarming rate. English, Doc. We've got to get Edna home now. Then I must be back in... Would you be kind enough to tell me what day it is? It's the day I place you under arrest for arson, resisting arrest, and being a general all-round pain in the what? ass. No! You can't arrest me! Not now, I just got back from the last century. Would you look at that? Edna Strickland, drunk as a skunk. I'm not drunk, you reprobate. I'm a time traveler. Sure you are. <laughs> I'm loving this. I I'll prove it to you. Come with me. We can do the whole day over if you want. We can fix everything. We can start by drying you out. Come on, into the station with you. You can bunk with me, doll. I'd rather die. Stop it! Unhand me, you dolt! 
Well, I guess that's it for Edna. Yes, I suppose it is. You know, whoever said time heals all wounds didn't know squat about time travel. What do we do about that, DeLorean? No need to do a thing. Ever since we synced up the time circuits, the temporal breakdown in Edna's DeLorean has accelerated at an exponential rate. By my calculations, the timeline should catch up with it in five, four, three, two, one, now! What the hell? Hey, Parker, you're not gonna believe this! See? what I say? Ready to go home? Wait, Doc, the timeline's not fixed yet. Look! Michael! You missed all the fireworks at the expo! Yeah, so I heard. Listen, I heard a rumor about you two. I guess we gotta come clean. Ta-da! Hardy took me to Reno last night! Try to keep a secret in Hill Valley. <laughs> well, you're gonna congratulate us or what? Then it's true. My grandpa's married the wrong grandma. I'm done for. Hey, are you feeling alright, kid? You don't look so hot. Trixie, you can't marry Artie. Is this about my past with Kid? Cause Artie ain't holding that against me. That's right, darling. The past is the past. Yeah, but... Artie, you can't do this. You're not supposed to get married for another five years. Well, I know Trixie and I were taking things slow. But after that witch Edna got me fired with that postcard, we kind of accelerated things a little. The postcard? Oh, man. Can you see through me? Nope. Never could figure you out. I thought you'd be thrilled for us. You don't understand. You're supposed to marry Sylvia Miskin. But I did marry Sylvia Miskin! What? You didn't think my real name was Trixie Trotter, did ya? Don't feel too bad. It was kind of a surprise to me, too. Wait a minute. Your Grandma Sylvie? Grandma? Hey, how old do you think I am, kiddo? Uh, but you're so... so... Skinny and blonde and huh. Oh my god. I've seen you naked. You're Sylvia? Are you okay, pal? Yeah, I'm fine. Great. You kids go off and have yourself a wonderful honeymoon. And don't worry about your dad, Artie. I'm sure he'll come around. Come around to what? Um, to approving your marriage. You seem kind of mad about it back at the high school. Well, that was before I got a look at her. Besides, as my dear old father Seamus used to say, no sense in getting riled up over something I can't do nothing about. And honestly, now that I met her, I can't imagine a better daughter-in-law than the charming Miss Sylvie here. Aw, thank you, Dad. As for you, stranger, I'll thank you to not go poking your nose in McFly family business. It's been a pleasure, Agent Corleone. See you in the funny papers, Mikey. Goodbye, Grandma. You know, I took some pictures of Trixie in 1931. Hey, that's my grandma you're talking about. Here we are, back in good old 1986. May 14th? 15th. Best to build in a little lag time. It gives you a chance to catch up. Looks like the estate sale is still going on. Hey, don't you want to stay, Doc? You gotta stop the bank from selling off all your old stuff. What are you talking about? Estate sale? Bank? I'm not dead, Marty. Clara and I are having a little garage sale, that's all. Garage sale? You mean... Marty, you're back from your trip. Hello, Doc. Selling off the family treasures, eh? <laughs> Not quite, but I hope you find something you like. Speaking of which, did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, I sure did. Great! Hey, is that a box of Asimov? Let me get this straight. Are you telling me you live here now? In 1986? Well, naturally. Claire and I maintain a part-time residence here. Wasn't that the case when you left? No. Strange. I can't imagine not sticking around. 
After all, I've got my late father's foundation to supervise. If I wasn't here, who'd present the annual Earhart Brown Scholarship for young scientists? <laughs> Something funny? I'll explain it to you later. I don't see what's so funny about looking after a family legacy. Oh, almost forgot. I've got something for you. Happy graduation. Graduation? But that's not for another... The McFlies of Hill Valley. An exhaustively detailed history of your family. From your great-great-grandfather Seamus to the present. You traveled through time to write this? Well, most of the research was done traditionally, but your grandma Sylvia proved to be something of a mystery. Which is why you traveled back to 1931, uh, to look for her. Exactly. Who knew she was singing in a speakeasy on her stage name? This is great, Doc. Thanks. Ah, uh, it's the least I could do for the man who saved me from making the worst mistake of my life. Yoo-hoo! Dr. Brown! Edna? Heine! What's going on? What are you doing on my door? The same thing I do every afternoon, silly man. Giving him such much needed exercise. Isn't that right, Einstein? Hey, Dollface, it's past time for our 3.30. Coming, sweetie! Oh, Mr. McFly, have you seen my stepson anywhere? Oh, Biff! I think you're late for an appointment. Oh, uh, well, gosh. Uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, uh, hi, Marty! Don't they make a great little family? You'd never know they met in prison. Don't say anything. Let's just walk quietly into the lab and hope there are no more surprises. Marty, you can't be here. If your younger self sees you, the consequences could be catastrophic. My younger self? Oh, right. Bring him along, too. This concerns all of us. What do you mean? Does something happen to us? Do we turn into assholes or something? Nah, we're fine. But our great-great-grandkids? What the hell? Great Scott. Doc, you gotta come back with me. Back Don't to listen to him, Doc. It's me you gotta help. If you want to save Jennifer and our 12 kids. What? That timeline was overwritten five jumps back. Doc, Jennifer's how can there be two more of me here? I have no idea. My all rights of space-time continuum should be tearing apart like a cheap dish rag right now. It already is. What my evil twin and I are trying to say is the future is totally jacked up. And you gotta come with me to save it. No, me. So... We meet at last. You've altered my timeline once too often. What's going on, Doc? Well, we do seem to have a conundrum on our hands. Or three. Yeah, Doc, but which one is the real me? Isn't it obvious, Marty? Come on. Prepare to be erased. Doc, wait. What about the space-time continuum? Yeah, what about my future? And mine? The future can wait. We've got a present to catch up with. Where to, Doc? Mr. McFly, thrill me. 